Hello my soccer universe. Well, it was an interesting match day and again I have superior soccer powers to the negative. Uh, just want you to remember, yesterday I was wearing the black Real Madrid shirt and I usually do not wear the shirt of a team that's playing that day. I honestly did not pay much attention, did not realize it. I realized it when I went to watch, watch video and I said, okay, it doesn't matter. Real Madrid is playing against Club Bruges. What can go wrong? <laughs> I cursed them. I absolutely cursed them. If you're new to this channel, I am of the, you know, I'm not really of the belief, but I still act like it. Rationally, it doesn't make sense. I'm of the belief if I wear the jersey of a team that's playing that day, the team is, will be losing, especially if it's a team that I like. So you never, I, I never broke the rule yesterday, but I really, 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 really try to avoid this. I'm also, I also am of the belief if I want to use this for my advantage, it's not going to work either. So you won't see me wearing a lot of Inter jerseys uh, as well. Anyway, uh, I thought, yeah, it does, doesn't matter. A, I don't care that much about Real Madrid these days anyway. So let's leave it. And against Club Bruges, I mean, that bad the curse cannot be. They will beat them easily. <laughs> so that was the first game. Uh, Club Bruges in that first half made two goals. Real Madrid made none. Especially Tony, only Tony Gross had a miss. And it gotta be said, I mean, uh, both goals were stumbled into the net by uh, Denise and a really absolutely crazy goal. The first one looked like it's offside and then when you see the lines there was no offside whatsoever. Uh, absolutely nuts and then he, he doesn't even have a good touch but because um, Courtois is kind of also a little bit misjudging to see the situation the ball goes into net. I did this, this is the joke goal. Uh, of the season so far, but also the second one that was in the 39th. At that point, I wanted to note I was about to take my shower, so I think I didn't have the uh, jersey on yet, but um, it had not washed off. I know I'm a complete nutcase, and I know there is no empirical evidence behind that except that uh, in my perception it was. So I'll use it jokingly. For sure. So yeah, uh, it's 2 nil Bruges and I, I'm really thinking, A, is this really gonna happen? And B, wow, this is a team that beat last, yes, deservedly so, but to be honest, it was kind of a tactish, uh, it, Lask had a chance, especially if, if it's a home game, they convert their chances. Uh, so yeah, it's also from my personal last perspective um, we might not have looked all that bad in the Champions League either which is something that for me is really really uh, hard to fathom to be honest um, so yeah it's 2-0 at the half and uh, Real Madrid tries to get one back honestly the second half was much better from Real Madrid uh, and it was a really weird because there I was just yesterday uh, saying yeah, Real Madrid stays on top of the uh, table in La Liga. They manage uh, play there, and you know you hear they're now defensively tight uh, in Spain. They're even saying that Zidane is taking an edge of uh, Simeone, uh, first going in for the defense and then uh, going forward, especially after the loss to Paris. And then they have a, such a weird showing absolutely weird showing where I'm actually thinking they thought this is a game that they're gonna win just like that and that's always dangerous uh, and they're vulnerable in defense that was also clear to be seen so yeah um, second half they get the goal through Sergio Ramos which also was waived for offside and was also just by hair I think it was Percy Tau that was not uh, was um, you know, having a foot in, if he puts the foot a little bit in, it's not an offside by any measure, but it was offside, so uh, it was not offside. So he could have put, uh, it would have been offside, and yeah. goal was given. Let's <laughs> put it that way. And then again, 
not much coming from Real Madrid. Not much, really. That 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 was to me the amazing part. And uh, just when you thought that Rouge might uh, pull pulled it off, uh, Ruud Vorma makes two silly challenges in two in seven minutes or something like that. First one clear that his foot is way too high, and the sec second one he doesn't need to win there. I mean that was his uh, teammate. Uh, Tackling the ball, the ball away from that free kick, as Cas Casemiro gets a header, makes it 2-2. Then you think, ooh, now they're gonna crumble. But in the end, Schreiber, who just came out, but no one in Madrid saw him coming, and with a little bit more composure, he could have gotten the win in stoppage time. Anyway, this is a huge result for Bruges. Um, and yeah, Real Madrid in the Champions League doesn't look good. Um, in the same group, PSG. And I'm not going to be chronological. I mean, uh, I started Real Madrid because it really was the first game. Uh, in the same group, um, PSG at first completely dominated Galatasaray. Awesome atmosphere there. Absolutely loud and uh, one of the intimidating. Uh, they're still without Neymar, but you know, they have a Di Maria who missed uh, two glorious chances. Um, they eventually get the goal early in the in the second half uh, through Icardi, who I heard had less touches when he came off. But by, by, by the time he, he he came off, he had less touches than Kaylan Navas, the keeper. That is amazing. So uh, he was not really in the, in in the game, but he gets the winning goal uh, right after the goal. Then Galatasaray came back, but couldn't find the equalizer. Um, in the end, I think it was a deserved win by PSG, who now comfortably lead, lead this group. Um, and we have uh, Bruges at two points and Real Madrid and Galatasaray uh, um, having one point each. So that's definitely interesting. Uh, let me see my three, and I think uh, Real, Real Madrid is even in last place. I'm now doing mental math. You will probably have here. Uh, the, t the table um, on the screen. So yeah, that was uh, Group A. Um, let's go to Group C because there was the other early game between Atlanta and Schachter played in Milan. Uh, they did one smart thing in Milan um, that only speckers were more or less all in the lower bowl, which gave it a, a good atmosphere. Atalanta is not going to feel the San Siro. Uh, it hurts me a little bit to see that now every round the home game is played on Zero San Siro because it should be Milan there. But given how Milan is playing these days, no, they should not be there anyway. So, Atalanta. Atalanta having a, a, a bright start, getting a penalty that uh, Ilicic misses. They do get the lead through Zapata and everything seems like smooth sailing. I mean, it was a very even first half, I also have to say. Um, but shortly before halftime, Schachter equalizes. Uh, Schachter playing in those horrible jerseys, although I have to say, in match they didn't look as bad as they look when you see them on the screen. Second half is basically all Atalanta, they just cannot find the breakthrough. Uh, I mean, at first it was kind of a slip, but once the game pick picked up towards the end, Atalanta really went all in and they couldn't find the winner. Who gets the winner? Schachter. It's stoppage time. Uh, well, this is one of those damning losses, and I have to say, if you're for Schachter, uh, that must feel really good of stealing a game that way. I know. Uh, I was actually cause I really hope that Atalanta is, get, is get, getting something, but it was really feel good if you're a Schachter fan because that was not a win you deserved, but you got it. So this is usually a good sign. Atalanta really has to pay for their inexperience. Uh, the other game in the group, Manchester City, that I'm wearing now, not that I'm because I'm so proud of uh, Manchester City's win. Wasting, wasting chances. Um, and uh, Sterling, I think, around the 60th, finds a breakthrough and fold at the very end, makes it 2 0. To be honest, this is a game that should have been way decided by halftime uh, with the amount of chances that uh, City was wasting. But you know, City is not as the smooth machine that they were uh, late in the season, so that's something. But you know, it's a pretty neat jersey, so, and they won, so I think. They deserve it. It's the first time I'm wearing this to work as well. So yeah, uh, 
in that group now, City of course, uh, three out of three. Um, Dinamo Zagreb and Schachter have three points each. Atalanta is at zero, which actually might not be the worst for Atalanta, but they need to get a result against the City, which might be hard. Uh, shall we do quick quick group, group D before we go to the other big story of the evening? The one that was on the thumbnail. Uh, Juventus, Leverkusen. Juventus did not have a great, great performance, but still showed that their class is better than Leverkusen. Um, with Igoin getting the opener in the, in the second half. Um, then the game kind of felt yes, that was midway through the, through the first half. I keep getting, keep messing up first and second half here. So there um, was one nil, and then the game really fell, fell asleep, mostly because you know Juventus has has a big game coming up against Inter, and it seemed that this is playing a part in it, and there was really not much coming from Leverkusen. Um, I guess they had a discussion at, at, at work. I'm not a big fan of Leverkusen. I actually would put Leverkusen... Le, Leverkusen is one of those, those teams that I couldn't care less about. Uh, in some ways, if it was a title challenge between Bayern and Leverkusen, I probably would, would be more happy with Bayern to, to, to start just because they've been there, done that, and they can have some swagger. I'd never have this with Leverkusen, to be honest. Just never. Really, uh, it's a team. I literally, I couldn't care less and less about. And it's not a team that, to me, belongs in the Champions League. I'm sorry to say. Uh, I know they have some credit, uh, credibility there. They were in the final. To me, no, no. It's just it is. Just my personal purpose feeling. And I always had had this with Liverpool. It's also with the weird name Bayer. Uh, Bayer. No. Whatever. Uh, and then in the second half, suddenly uh, Juve says, "Well, well, maybe we we might just as well do something about this." And uh, they quickly get Igo in, goes to the touchline, uh, puts in a cross. Ronaldo steps over, Bernardeschi puts it in two 0 Ronaldo then misses a chance to make it three, but in the end he gets his third goal. Easy win for uh, Juventus. Um, also easy win for Atletico Madrid, who completely dominated Lok away from home. Lok uh, was surprised that they play at home in white and then Atleti plays in black. Maybe it has to do with the jerseys or whatever. Uh, but yeah, it was, from what I was told and saw, it was all Atleti, mainly missing chances, which is the big uh, Achilles heel of Atleti this season. And yeah, uh, they get the 1-0, I think, early in the second half through Joao Felice who takes a shot at the rebound from the goalkeeper. He puts in basically with his shin. And uh, did he also score the second? Anyway, 10 minutes later, no, no, it was um, Thomas uh, scores the second, makes it to new for Atleti. Then a glorious chance for Krikowiak that was a really great save. I think probably the save of the evening by Oblak. Um, it remains 2-0 and so the two Giants, Juventus and Atleti, uh, again on top of the group, and I don't see any way this going differently. Uh, in Group B, I keep the big game for last. Um, it was Chervena um, Svesta at home to Olympiakos, where Olympiakos uh, dominated proceedings in the first half and got a deserved lead. Uh, from 1 0, and there was really not much coming from Cervena Suesta, but then a yellow red for Olympiakos that was a little bit, yeah, so and so. Um, and then they get the equalizer, and after two corners, uh, late in, in the game, they even get two more goals and get the win. Uh, kind of you gotta count yourself lucky, but again. The mentality of Cervena Suesta is outstanding. Even if they're not in the game, you'll never count them out. So for that reason, yeah, they get off. Uh, at least at home, they will be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, which is also something you thought about Spurs. Maybe, maybe not. I think once Ajax beat them, they had to stop that on the uh, But that was the game of the evening. Um, 
name wise and if you saw how they were doing uh, actually at the beginning Spurs started brightly I mean both teams having chances Son scores the opener for Spurs unfortunately Kimmich just a few minutes later gets the equalizer and that was symptomatic for the game that uh, Spurs was wasteful I mean after that 1-1 Spurs really went for it and the commentator said yeah it should be 2-1 3-1 for uh, Spurs at the, at the moment but who gets the goal Bayern through uh, amazing Lewandowski sequence if you watch Lewandowski's move first he is assisting kind of all these chances by being uh, at the near post I think it was after a corner but he never gives up he's always in play always tries to see whether uh, what can do, whether he can pull a defender off or not in the end the ball falls to him I think it was all the world that uh, was trying to mark him uh, with the back to his goal turn 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 around puts it into net 2-1 absolute this was the blow for Spurs uh, they didn't make the chances and that was the dagger right there that there and then they were not come coming back early in the second half Gnabry makes two goals uh, within two within two minutes or something like it with the 4-1 especially no, no again because of the work of Lewandowski because while um, all the world is really only accompanying Gnabry which uh, is a damning thing to say um, Lewandowski also pulls um, Vertonghen away from him and opens the, the shot lane that Gnabry can use to make it 4-1 uh, uh, a few minutes later you thought Spurs might get into it they get a penalty which honestly mm, they look they look at it and gave it I, I, I don't know for, for me it was not that much of a foul Kane converts you think Spurs is in? No, no. Bayern could score at will, especially then late in the game when it was clear for Spurs that they are not gonna come back and then they completely fell from the park. Uh, Gnabry, Lewandowski, Gnabry. Gnabry gets four in this game. Um, completely annihilated Spurs. I mean, it was for them the greatest fun to make those goals. And I understand it was kind of a slightly unlucky run of play for Spurs, especially in the first half. But you can't let, let this go in the second half like that. Um, that's absolutely inexcusable and it was a horrible, horrible, horrible showing by Spurs. Definitely gonna say that. Uh, they are now, then they are not even last in the group because of off away goals. But it doesn't, uh, Spurs do not look good and I think uh, just when you when, when we thought that at the weekend against Southampton they pulled out one, Bayern showed them. And I don't think a Bayern is even that great of a team when going forward, yes, but the backline. Mm -hmm. Whenever I see Süle, I honestly have to say I, this, I don't have much confidence there. So, yeah, Bayern gets a huge win. Reminds me, I mean, they once uh, annihilated uh, Roma 7 1 2014, something like that. Uh, didn't end it in the semis. Uh, many in Germany said, oh, if Bayern can beat the finalists, that is a big thing. Uh, one can only dream of how far Bayern can go. As I said, I'm not paying too much attention to that. Uh, simply for the fact that I think this is a horrible Spurs team. And a Spurs team that honestly was riding its luck to the final last season. It was an amazing ride but they were riding their luck big time and for that reason um, I don't think it's I mean it's a statement win but it's not an indication of uh, how far Bayern will go in this group it's more in, an indictment on how bad Spurs are at the moment and let's see what it will mean uh, you could see that Pochettino was completely checked after, uh, after the game it's definitely helping now Niko Kovac uh, who seems to get a little bit more comfortable in Munich. But that definitely was, I have to say, Bayern was ice cold. I mean, almost any chance that they had, they took. And I think even expected goals, Spurs won. That says everything. Uh, Bayern, were, Bayern were just clinically and not letting Spurs breathe at all. Well, 
today is actually for me the more interesting gate day, uh, the, especially Barcelona Inter, but also as I said, Liverpool South, Salzburg. I actually have a feeling, although the Austrian teams are playing big names, Liverpool, and then Roma and Sporting, I don't see them without chance. I'm gonna bite my tongue for saying it out loud. Anyway, let me know what you thought about the games yesterday, especially I would be interested in Spurs, but you know, everything else I'd be very good. Also, Real, Real Madrid. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos or playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm gonna wish you a wonderful day. Bye.